All right, hello class. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a quick little introduction to um, spreadsheet programs like Excel or uh, there are other ones like Google Docs and, and uh, LibreOffice, stuff like that. But we're mainly going to be focusing on Excel, um, basically because they're the ones that our, our campus computers have here. And uh, you should be able to also get a license for those. Um, and the reason we want to talk about these is because um, you probably noticed when you were doing your homework on sections like uh, this one, I'm looking at the standard deviation homework uh, from back in, uh, back previously in this, earlier in the semester, and um, like finding the min and the max, the range, the mean, those aren't too bad to do by hand with a, a data set like this, right? There aren't that many options, but you probably did find that already at this point, the standard deviation was kind of a, a bear to get through, right? It's not, it's not a hard formula necessarily. It's just a very tedious one, right? It's, it's, and once you do it a couple of times, you, you kind of get the sense of like, okay, I get it. All right. Can we, uh, you know, get a, a nicer way to do this? And that's what Excel allows us to do. Now, I know some of you have like TI calculators and your TI calculators can do this as well. They can give you the standard deviation and the quartiles and, and all that kind of stuff. But even that, I think, um, while those calculators are really powerful, they aren't as user-friendly as they probably could be. Um, so, what I want to show is how we can use Excel or f uh, programs like it, okay, to um, calculate these things for us so we don't have to do them by hand every single time. However, we, uh, we didn't show you this immediately because you also need to kind of know what's going on behind the scenes so that if a program ever gives you some number that's wrong you should there should be a sense there that oh wait that doesn't make sense at all right that that's not um, that's not great so we are going to use Excel to find I'll just do this problem six to start with and then I'll show you some other things Excel can do that um, we would struggle to do by hand, okay? So uh, I'm going to switch over to Excel here. Okay, so here's Excel, or this is what my Excel looks like anyway. And I've copied the data um, from the problem, the whole table, into Excel. All right, and um, I want to show a couple things we can do here. So uh, if you've never used Excel or anything like this before, um, it might operate a little different than you're used to because when you um, say hit enter, you go down to the next cell. These are called cells. Uh, you go down to the next cell instead of like going, like t going down to the next paragraph, right? If you want to do that, you have to. Um, you know, I actually I don't know because I've never had to do that. Um, but so shift enter goes up. You can also move around with the arrow keys. Um, tab also moves over, okay. And so a couple weird things like that. If you've never used a spreadsheet program before, uh, I recommend like popping one open with some data and just playing around with it for a little bit because it, it, like anything, it, it takes a little getting used to. All right, so. I will also preface this by saying I am not an Excel expert at all. Okay, usually when I'm messing with data, I use Python or something like that, right? But that's a whole other, uh, whole other thing, whole other ball game there. So if you're curious about that, you can email me and we can uh, kind of do that uh, as sort of like an aside, but. For most people, I think knowing a little bit of Excel, though, is going to be really helpful because while I will use Python for like really big projects, 
Uh, for real quick things, I load up. I don't usually use Excel either. I use LibreOffice just because it's um, quicker and it it it's a lot less sort of bloated. I, 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 that sounds really negative. Excel has a lot more features than I usually need, so I use a simpler program. However, Excel has a lot of um, like usability things that are really nice, right? It's very user friendly. Okay. So while I'm not an Excel expert, knowing a little bit of Excel is very uh, advantageous to me. For example, every grade book I make for any class that I teach, I use uh, Excel or the open source version of Excel. I use a spreadsheet program. Right? And I use these functions I'm going to be showing you here now. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the, the long way to go about doing this would be you head over to formulas up here. And this will bring up your formulas ribbon. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and there's insert function, but you also have a few that you could look at, like your recently used, your lookup and references. Those can be really... Uh, powerful. And then if you go over to statistical, you'll see all this stuff and some of it may look familiar. For example, oh, here's average and a couple of averages. Um, there's um, beta. We didn't talk about beta distribution, but um, there's a count, right? There's frequency, so we can make uh, frequencies here. Um, we have max. Oh, uh, we have min. We have median. We should... I don't think there's a range, but once we have max and min, we can make range. See, we have quartiles. Okay. And um, all, all sorts of stuff like that. And then here's ST, STDEV. This is our standard deviations. Okay, so you can actually come over here to click that insert function button and if we hit the insert function button it will bring this up and you can decide what you want to look at so there's a bunch of stuff and you could instead choose from here and say okay I want to look at my statistical stuff and I want to find the maximum okay okay here's the maximum so and then it gives you a little description it says max number one number two comma with an ellipsis there, returns the largest value in a set of values, ignores logical values in text. Okay, so it most of these functions, unless you pick a very specific one, like this one, max a does not ignore logical values or text, it will count them as zeros. Okay, now so you might want that, you might not, um, but we'll just hit max here. And then from here, it tells us, it's asking us now, all right, where do we want to start counting? And where do we want to end or stop counting? Okay, so um, what you can do is come over to here. And when I clicked over here, let me do it again. When I clicked this 11, you'll see it said A2. That's because that's in column A, row 2. All right, so and now holding down, I just drag over it, select everything, and you'll see here it says A2 colon A17. So it's saying, all right, I want to take the max from uh, A2 all the way down to A17. I'll hit OK, and there we go. It spits out A50. So if we go back here, I would ask for the min first, but that's fine. Um, here it has max. So if we look, all right, that's 50. So that lines up with what we would expect. Right now, if you'll notice, if we're back on my screen here, here's my 50. You'll notice up here, it has equals max and then A2 colon A17, right? Another way you can do this, you don't have to go through your menus, right? You don't have to like click and choose and all this. If you know what function you want, right, this was the max, so let me call it max so I remember what this was. If I know next I want to look at the min, 
I don't have to like search through this insert function thing and, and find it. All I need to do is mimic this notation here, this equals max. In Excel, when you put numbers in, it knows that that's a number, right? You see it aligns it to the right. If you give it a text string, it knows that it is text and it puts it, aligns it to the left, okay? Another interesting thing, if you give it a date, it knows that too, right? It knew, I give it 4 over 13, it knew that that was supposed to be a date, all right? Now, what if you wanted to calculate, what if you actually wanted to calculate 4 over 13? Well, then you would have to put an equal sign, equals 4 over 13, because you're telling it, calculate 4 over 13 and put it in the cell, and there we go. There's 4 over 13, which is 0 0.307, blah, 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 okay? So that means you can actually do math in an Excel spreadsheet, right? You can say it equals 2 times 7 divided by 4 plus 16, and there you go. You get whatever that ends up being, okay? All right, so since it has all these different types that it knows how to do, okay, if I come over here and I hit equals, okay, well I put max up here, I'm going to start typing min. And you'll see that as I do that, it's giving me options, right, and so it gives me options. And so once I, so see it here, I have uh, mi, and it, the first one it asks for is mid. Well, I don't want that. From here, I could actually scroll down to min. That's the one I want using the arrow keys. All right. And if I want to select that one, I just hit tab and it comes up. And then from here, I have equals min. And now it wants me to tell it where it wants to look to find the minimum. And we can do the same thing we did before. Click on the first item and then... Um, drag down to cover A2 through A17. Okay, I'll close my parentheses and hit enter, and there we go. Our minimum is 11. So if we go back to here, hit min. All right, that lines up with what the homework says it should. And now range. The thing is with range though, I don't think we have a range, and if we do, yeah, you see, I typed in range and I didn't really get anything. I got binomial distribution range. Um, that doesn't sound like anything we've done before. However, if you remember what range was, range is equal to the max minus the min. Okay, so notice that was text. And it covers up the next cell if the cell's not big enough. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Oh, so I can calculate the range myself. I don't need a range function since it's just a subtraction. Right, I'll just take the max and subtract the min. Well, how we can do that is actually a lot of ways, but the quickest way would be I could say equals. All right, and now I'm going to click on that 50. And you'll see that it puts a B2 in there. Now be careful clicking other stuff, right? If you click other things, it's going to put that in there. I'm going to put in B2, and then I'm going to hit minus. All right, and you see that stopped sort of squiggling around. And then minus, I'm going to hit that 11. All right, so what I'm saying is I want to calculate B2 minus B3, and there we go, we get 39. Hopefully that lines up. Now, why wouldn't we just calculate this ourselves? Well, the reason is, let's say I write this for any general data and these numbers can change, right? So say instead of, let's say I load in another set of data and I want to keep my programming the same and this has a nine in here. Well, did you see how all that changed all at once? when I change the data here. So I can change a value here and put like a 60, and look, everything changes. 
Okay, so if you put it in programmatically like this, um, with syntax and functions and equal signs, you will actually have something that you can load data into right, and continue to use. Okay, so uh, let's undo that. I think that's correct there. All right, so we've done the max, we've done the min, we've done the range. Um, if we look back here, the mean. Well, um, there are a couple of different means, but we probably saw it. The mean we talk about is just the average. Okay, so I want to calculate the average of these items here. Okay. And there we go. So the average here is 30.9375. And there we go, 30.9375. Okay, so there's my average. So you'll notice it doesn't put any text in for you. So you need to do that yourself if you know you care about um, coming back later and, and remembering what you did. And now here's the nice part. Okay, is the standard de deviation. Okay, now we have. Uh, two forms of um, standard deviation, right? There's one for a sample and one for the population. Now, this problem says the table below gives the number of hours spent watching TV last week by a sample of 16 children. So we will need to use the sample version of the standard deviation, not the population version of it. Okay, so when we go to standard deviation, standard deviation is usually, in most things, notated as STDEV. Whoops. Now you'll notice we have two versions. We have dot P, and you'll see it calculates the standard deviation based on the entire population given as arguments. Okay? And then uh, standard deviation dot S estimates standard deviation based on a sample. That's one we want. And then I want to calculate it for this. And notice I didn't close out the parentheses there. I just hit enter and it actually just assumed that I was done and uh, didn't fuss at me too much there. Okay, and we got 11.09 here and 11.09 here. So there's our standard deviation. All right. All right, now it wasn't asked for it, but we can go further than this. We can calculate um, we calculate the quartiles, okay? So if I hit quartile, so here is, all right, next up should be uh, the quartiles, right? So we've, uh, talked about how to find the um, those summaries. We already found the min. We found the max. Um, we want to probably find the median next. So whoops. So I can just put equals mead. Ah, and I already have median there. So I'll just hit that. Select all my values here. And there we go. The median is 32. All right. Now if I want to do some other quartiles, you might notice that when you plug in quartile, you see a couple things here. You see quartile dot x, quartile dot inc, and just quartile. You notice here this function is available for compatibility with Excel 2007 and earlier. Um, we want to use either quartile Inc, that means inclusive or just normal quartile here. Um, this is the type that we learned in, in class. Uh, there's another type of quartile out there. Um, but yeah, we either want quartile inc or we could just use quartile. It's easier to use. Whoops. Um, all right, so we could just use quartile. And it asks, now this one is asking for two things, right? Because uh, it's we have a couple of um, different quartiles that we could use, right? So first is array. Well, what is array? Array is this. It's like a list, 
That's what an array is. So I, you know, select this like I usually do. I hit comma, and now you'll see it, it gives you options here of what it's looking for. So zero would be minimum, one would be first quartile, two would be median, three would be third quartile, and four would be max. So let's look for the first quartile. So put in one, and there we go. Our first quartile is 24.75. And then I'll put in my second quartile here. Or uh, third quartile, sorry. And there we go. So now we have here uh, Q1 and Q3. Okay. Okay, so that is pretty much, I'd say, most of what we've looked at for describing data, um, you know, um, analytically this way, right, using calculations. We have max, min, range, average, standard deviation, median, Q1, Q2, 3, 4, that we've already done that. Um, Now, you may be thinking, um, this seems like uh, it might be a lot of work to come in here every single time you need to do something and uh, select it. And you'll notice that we basically were using um, the same thing every single time, right? We were always using, in each one of these, A2 to A17. A2 to A17, A2 to A17, A2 to A17, okay? So to give you an example of how we can streamline this a little bit, if I come over here, so here is a, a bit of data I um, brought in from various classes I've taught, okay? And I got rid of the names, of course, but um, I put their classification, whether they were, uh, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, whatever, their gender, and so that's male or female, or there's some were not specified, where they did not want to specify their gender. Here's their grade, so this would be their final grade in the class. And then here we have uh, the number of absences. Okay. All right, so if I want to find the average of the grades, so let me call this, call. Um, this cell here, grade average, okay, and I want to put the grade average right here. Um, it's not super easy to scroll all the way down here, right? I have a hundred elements right here. So instead of dragging it over, what we can do instead is, you see when, when you do that, when you drag over and select all this stuff, you actually get, it's telling you what those values are. We're looking at D2 to D101. Oh, okay. Well, maybe when I get to this average thing, I could just put D2 colon D101. And you see how it filled up this whole thing when I did that? Let's do it again. D10, D15, D101. Okay, and there we go. There's the average. So there's the average of all the grades. Okay, and we can go through here and, and you know, find the median. So let's, I always say that the average doesn't always tell the whole story. You need both the average and the median. So I'm going to do median uh, D2. And it's really nice that it tells you what it's doing there on the side to D101. Okay, and so the median and the, the average are really close together. Okay, so that's one way you can do this without having to, um, you know, without having to drag across a huge list of things. Okay, now, um, another thing thing we looked at, and this got closer to when we were graphing stuff, um, but I, I want to go ahead and show that 
it's uh, when we have the frequencies. So let's say I want to know um, how many like A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's that I have in this group of students. Okay, well, in order to do that, what we can do is we can set up a frequency. So if you remember, here we go. This calculates how often values occur within a range uh, of values. And it's, oh, I can move that. That's cool. Uh, it calculates how often values occur within a range of values and then returns a vertical array of numbers having one or more elements, one or more element than bins array. Okay, that may seem a little strange, but when I do this, it's asking for a data array. So that's a list of data that I want to make a frequency distribution of. And then bins array. Well, Excel calls these bins. All right, so we have a certain number of bins that we want, and we want to count how many of these numbers are in each bin. So I think it might just be easier to uh, show you an example. So I'm going to make an, a, a bin array. So I want to start with looking at everything that's below 50, like 50 or below, right? Those are your Fs, right? So that would be Fs. Then I want to look at 50 to 60, all right? Because that would be your, um, oh no, that would still be your F. So, sorry, let me say 60. I want to look at everything below 60, because that would be your uh, Fs. Then uh, 60 to 70 will be your Ds, right? 70 to 80 will be your Bs, 80 to 90. I think I said that wrong. 70 to 80 will be your Cs, 80 to 90 will be your B's and 90 to 100 will be your A's. Well, I'm not going to put 100, but um, yeah, I'm just going to have this set up. All right, so now I'm going to put equals frequency. Then for data array, I'm going to do the D2 to D101. For my bins array, I'm going to Select this, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Close this off, and there we go. So what has this given us? Well, this first thing tells me how many guys are less than 60. This one tells me how many are between 60 and 70. This one tells me how many are between 70 and 80. This one between 80 and 90. Okay, and this one is over 90. Okay, now I'm not getting too uh, caught up on, okay, um, you know, these are strict. So this group is everything strictly below 70. So you could think of this as including 60 to 70 open, if you're familiar with that notation. If you're not, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so we can actually set up distributions that way, or uh, frequencies that way, to kind of tell us, all right, well, I had 7Fs, uh, 23Ds, 22Cs, 26Bs, and 22As. It was kind of right down the middle and as far as, except for the Fs, right? It was up pretty even. Okay. All right, now, um, what if we want to do that with um, something else, something qualitative instead of a quantitative. So say something like this, I want to count uh, the classification, right? So let's say I want uh, to count the number of freshmen, uh, sophomores, let me actually spell it right. I always have trouble spelling that one for some reason. Freshmen, sophomores, Juniors, and I did not, I shouldn't. Um, so if you need to uh, change the text of a, I'm glad this came up. If you need to change the text in a cell, don't just click on it and hit backspace because it'll do that, all right? Um, if you need to change the text, you need to select the cell 
and go up here. And there you can edit the text if you need to. Okay, That's going to take some getting used to if you're more used to um, working in Word, for example, or uh, other text-based things versus data entry-based things. Okay, So let's say I want to count the number of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors in all my classes and uh, do a frequency of that. Now, here's what's going to happen. If you do frequency, now you'll notice that it's talking about numbers, right? How many, how often values occur within a range of values and then returns a vertical array, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if we do a frequency here, uh, for classification, that's B. So that will be B2 to B101. Um, if I set my bins to this, you'll see I just, I, I get this thing, which doesn't really, it doesn't really tell me anything, all right? And that's because the frequency in this case is only for quantitative data. If we want qualitative data, we need to use the count if function. And it's really the count ifs, because there's count if, which it, it, it's only for one thing. The count ifs is plural, all right? It's a, I swear that must be a programming joke of some kind, but if I it, hit count, you'll see we have a lot of options. So we have count, this counts the number of cells in a range uh, that contain numbers, nope. Count A counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty, nope. Count blanks, that counts blanks, okay. Here we go. Count if counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition, and count ifs is counts the number of cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. All right, so we're going to do count ifs, and I'll show you how this works. So count ifs, we have the criteria range, so that is going to be RB2 to B101. Okay, so we're going to look there, and we're going to count how many, and here's the criteria, this. And there we go. Okay, and I, now that I've said it, we might be able to just use count if. Let me see. Count if the range B2 to B101 and the criteria here. Okay, we can. I was wrong about that. We can use either. Okay, I think if you have more than one um, condition, then you might want to... Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, anyway, so, yeah, you need to use the count if. Okay, so as you can see, and this is, I was looking at my calculus classes, um, a lot of freshmen and sophomores, some juniors, not many seniors. Most seniors have, have gotten through the calculus sequence already. And we can do the same thing for gender. If we want to count the male, the female, and the not specified, well, we can use our count if. And then we're counting in C this time, so that will be C2 to C101. And whoops, I need to give it a criteria, and the criteria is this, male, female, or non-specified. There we go, we had 43 male students, 56 female, and one that did not specify. Okay, now, this is all well and good if I know how many elements I have and I can type it in. Now here's the beauty of Excel. We can do all of this even faster, right? Because I can go over to example three here. Now this looks a lot like example two, except this goes on and on and on and on and on, right? I'm still scrolling. I'm at over 500 entries and I'm still scrolling. So let's say I don't want to look at how many items I have, right? I don't want to see for the average of the grades that I go from D2 all the way down to, let's say, D1001. All right, I don't want to do that. I just want to say, hey, I just want to average this column, okay? Well, we can do that. Because when we set 
type in equals average, notice what this said, okay? This returns the average, ar arithmetic mean, that's another word for it, of its arguments, which can be numbers or names, arrays, or references that contain numbers. Okay, so the thing to note about this, we have average and then average A. Average A uh, will count text, right? And normal average will skip text. Okay, so what I can do is I can just say, all right, I want to calculate the average, and then I'm going to click this C column. And you'll see it put that in C colon C. I'm just going to hit, whoops. All right, I know what I did wrong. I accidentally clicked column C. That doesn't have any numbers in it. So um, when I did that, just to show, um, when I said, oh, let's do everything in C, it said, ah, division by zero because, well, um, if it's skipping all the text, then it's not going to have any numbers from this column. So that's what it was saying. It didn't have anything. All right, so um, what I should have done is said average, then great, enter, and there we go. Now it is average the entire column. All right, so there is the grade average. And we can do the similar. If I want to count the male female, actually no, let's put female first this time. My female, male, oops. Oh my gosh, my keyboard. And not specify. Okay, so we can do this count if, and I'm going to click all of this column C and then give it the criteria female, male, and non-specified. Now, this is counting text. However, it's not going to count gender because I've not given that as a criteria. So it's just going to skip right over that. And there we go. Here we have 512 female students, 472 male students, and 16 that are non-specified. Okay. And, you know, we can do all sorts of stuff. Calculate the standard deviation. Um, when I calculate the standard deviation here, these are all my students that I'm looking at. We can count that as a population and not a sample if I want to. So let's do the standard deviation of the grades here. There we go, 12.87. All right, so hopefully that uh, helps um, or at least gives you a sense that when you need to crunch numbers like this, uh, Excel can be one of your best friends. And as I said, uh, there are other options out there if you don't want or don't have access to Excel, you don't like Microsoft that much, which frankly I could understand that. Um, okay, just to give you a, um, an idea of what I'm talking about, um, there's LibreOffice, and LibreOffice uh, is an open source program. It's completely free, and um, it has a writer, which is a word processor like Word, and then it has Calc, which is for spreadsheets. And while it does not have, um, it doesn't have all of the features Excel does, uh, there's a lot of things that you can still add in yourself. Um, but like for what I do, like making grade books and the things I just showed you uh, in this video can all be done in LibreOffice or OpenOffice is another one. Okay. Um, so, and I believe Google Docs can do it, their spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options out there. Most spreadsheet programs can do these types of functions. And a lot of times the, the, Functionality is pretty much the same. Like in LibreOffice, the function names are the same. However, instead of hitting tab to auto-complete them, you hit enter to auto-complete them. And that's pretty much the only difference that I've been able to establish. Okay, so hopefully that uh, helps with that. And uh, I will catch you on the next one when we look at how we can take this even further 
and make some of those graphs we were looking at when we were analyzing data. All right, I'll catch you all on that one. Cheers.